Hello and welcome to 3.3 Newton's second law of motion. In the last lesson we learned about the first law which said that something can't change speed or change direction without some force. Now the question is, okay, let's say we do have a force. What happens? Newton's second law tells us. It is this statement here, F equals MA. That's what Newton's second law is all about. So if we have a force, it's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the object. Here's that in words. We can say if there is an external force on an object, it causes an acceleration causes an acceleration that is inversely proportional to the mass. What we mean by inversely proportional is if the mass is lower, then the acceleration is higher. If the mass is higher, then the acceleration is lower. We have those, um, those graphs on the right here, so we have two graphs of this relationship. Here's force versus acceleration, and here's acceleration versus mass. And so we're just going to talk about those two relationships there. You can see the equation, F equals MA. So for force versus acceleration, as the, f as the acceleration goes up, the force goes up. And it's linear. You can see that. So force versus acceleration, this graph is a linear... Um, a linear graph, which means that it's a straight line. Um, and it is increasing, and it starts at zero. So what that means is that when there's zero force, there's zero acceleration. Okay, we have one other graph here, which is if we had a constant force, so if, the, if we keep force constant here, and look at what happens with the acceleration as we change the mass. Well, as we increase our mass, our acceleration goes down. Again, that comes from that equation, F equals MA. So, this here is an inverse graph. So, we can say as mass goes up, acceleration goes down. Now it is important that you're able to recognize these graphs here, these graphs of F versus A and A versus M. It's important that you're able to work with those. So just take a note, make sure that you understand how this works, that as the mass goes up, the acceleration goes down. Great, we're going to work with this equation a bit, F equals MA. Here we have a net force of 36 newtons forward applied to a volleyball of mass 0.25 kilograms. We want the acceleration. F equals MA. And before we go any further, I want to make sure that we're, we're clear here. We're talking about the net force here. So we apply a net force on an object that's equal to its acceleration times the mass. Good. So A is equal to F net over M. We've got our 36 newtons forward divided by 0 0.25 kilograms. And this gives us 144 meters per second squared. Or, if we want to use the right number of digits, 140. We were given two digits in the, in the first problem. Again, you can see where everything is coming from here. You can see now that newtons divided by kilograms gives us meters per second squared because our units here are one newton equals one kilogram meter per second squared. Good. Let's do another problem here. A 64 kilogram runner starts walking at three meters per second and then begins to speed up for, f for six seconds reaching a final velocity of 12. Calculate the nearest 
sorry, calculate the net force acting on the runner. Well, F net equals MA. That's what we're trying to find. First, we need to get the acceleration. A, we've got VF minus VI over delta T. And we can put in our numbers here. We have 12 minus 3 over 6 seconds. This gives us 9 over 6, or 1.5 meters per second squared east. There's our acceleration. Now we can find our net force. F net equals mass, we're told 64 kilograms, times 1.5 meters per second squared. We get 96 newtons east. There's our final answer, and that's, that's it. It's really just using this equation over and over again. That's what this um, Newton second law is all about. On our second page here, we've got another problem. A 9100 kilogram jet, moving slowly on the ground, fires its engines, resulting in a force of 22,000 newtons east on the jet. The force of friction is 3,800 newtons west. Now we have two forces on our object. So we need a free body diagram. We probably have gravity on this jet. And um, it's moving on the ground, so we have normal force still. Then it says we have 20, 22,000 newtons east. This is going to be some applied force from the engines. And we have some friction here, 3,800 newtons west. So we'll just call that friction for now. There's our free body diagram, and I've deliberately drawn this larger than this. Now we want the net force. F net equals. This is just what we've done from 3.1 and 3.2. We add up all the forces. Fg and Fn cancel out. We're left with Fa minus Ff. This is going to give us 22,000 minus 3,800. And that results in 18,200 newtons east. That's our net force. Now, if we're checking our significant digits, we were given 4 here, 5 here, 4 here. So our final answer can have 4 digits of information. We're good to go on this net force here. Calculate the, the acceleration of the jet. Well, A is equal to F net over M. That comes from F equals MA. So we can calculate this now. We have 18,200 divided by our mass of 9,100 kilograms. That gives us 2.0 meters per second squared, again in the east direction. Good. So even when we have more than one force working, we just need to get the net force always to get our acceleration. Now we're going to look at how this, um, this effect works when we're dealing with gravity. You know that Fg equals Mg. We looked at that at lesson 3.1. That's our force due to gravity. Now that obviously looks a lot like F equals Ma where g is the acceleration. Now, the one main difference here is that gravity can be exerting a force on us and not actually causing us to accelerate because that force could be cancelled by something else. So we have to be careful that we don't assume that we're accelerating because of gravity, and we're going to see that on the next problem here. So in this problem, it says, in an investigation, students place a 0 0.80 kilogram cart on a table. They tie one end of a light string to the front of the cart. They run the string over a pulley and then tie the other end to a 0.2 kilogram hanging object. Assume that no friction acts on either object. All right. First off, we've got to draw a picture of this situation here. So they say there's a cart on a table. There's a cart on a table. It says that there's a light string tied over a pulley, this is going to be our pulley, and 
The other end is tied to a hanging object. So this is our situation here. This cart has 0 0.8 kilograms of mass. This hanging object is 0 0.2 kilograms of mass. We'll call this object 1 and object 2. I'm going to warn you right now, this is uh, one of the trickier problems actually of this unit. This is a, a challenging problem. It's going to use everything that we've learned already, but um, we do need to be a bit creative. So follow along. It's going to use everything that we already know. Step one. Well, we're trying to find the magnitude of the acceleration of these objects. We've got a cart. We've got a, a hanging object. They're tied together with a string. If this one accelerates at some acceleration, this one has to accelerate at the same acceleration because they're tied together. They can't move at different speeds or at different accelerations. So the two accelerations have to be the same, and that's going to be very useful for us. It's going to be very useful for us. So we're going to start by drawing some free body diagrams of our first object. Here's our first object. We've got gravity. That's the gravity of the first object. And it has its normal force. And then the string is pulling it, so we have tension. Here's our second object. Our second object has, well, it's just hanging by a string, so it has gravity. And it has tension. On our first object, we're accelerating in this direction. The mass is pulling the whole system down, so it causes this to accelerate that way. OK, so we're accelerating that direction, and our second object is accelerating downwards. And we should say that this is the gravity of the second object. So here we go. We have got two pictures. They both have tension in them. And the magic of this solution is going to be using the fact that the tension is the same in both of these objects. That's very important, that when you have a string, the tension throughout is going to be the same. So the tension here and the tension here will be the same. Okay. We will um, start with object one. Object one, we can say that Fg and Fn cancel each other out. So the net force is equal to Ft. We also have this new statement that we can always use, F net equals ma. And in this case, it's the mass of our first object, m1a. So we can rearrange this to say that Ft is equal to m1a. And we're done there. We, we have a statement. Let's take a look at object 2. Object 2, again, we can say that the net force is equal to, in this case, Fg2 minus Ft. And I'm just going to erase those arrows there, actually. But um, it equals Fg2 minus Ft. This is our net force. The other thing we can say is that F net equals M2a. We can make those equal to each other now. We can say M2a equals Fg2 minus Ft. And now we can do a bit more with this. I want to get Ft all on its own. So I'm going to get Ft equals. Fg2 is M2g, and then I can do minus M2a from the left there. I have two statements for Ft here. I can combine those. The first object, we had Ft equals M1a. Second object, Ft equals M2g minus M2a. Those two have to be equal to each other. M1a equals M2g minus M2a. Now we can rearrange a bit to find a. I'm going to get M1a plus M2a on the left. And that's all equal to M2g. I'll factor out the a. That means that A is equal to M2G 
over m1 plus m2. And there we go. We finally have a, an equation that we can use to get a final answer. This is going to be 0 0.2 times 9.8 over 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2. And that gives me 1.96 meters per second squared. And finally, we'll just write that with the right number, two digits. And there is our very final answer for that problem. If you followed that, that is one of the more complicated sort of problems we're going to do. You're going to see this um, in the homework problems. You're going to see those sorts of problems over and over again in this course. So if you haven't followed along, please ask in class how you can solve this problem. It's very important that you understand how to do this. But you can see we didn't do anything too um, out of the ordinary. We drew our free body diagrams, and we went step by step just knowing what relationships we have. OK, at the bottom here, we want to find the magnitude of the tension. Well, we had a few statements for tension up here. I'm going to use the first one, Ft equals m1a. Well, we know m1. We know acceleration. So this gives us 1.568 newtons. And if we round that down, or up. We've got 1.6 newtons total. That's it. That's our whole lesson. Try out the problems there, and if you didn't follow any of that, uh, that last problem, please ask in class. Alright, see you in the next lesson.